Hello and welcome, I'm your Kudmaki, and Unity 603 is now available. This is pretty important because Unity 603, this is an LTS release, a long-term support release. In case you don't know, Unity recently changed how they handle their releases. So they've got pre-release, they've got support, and they've got long-term support. And usually the one you should be using is the latest either LTS or support version. So with this one being an LTS version, that means this is the recommended version. This is the one you should be using for projects for the future. But actually right now Unity has two LTS versions, so 6.3 LTS, the one that just came out, and you also still have the 6.0, that one is still LTS, meaning that one is still going to be supported for two years, so it launched in October 24, so it won't be supported officially until October 26. So if you want, you can stick with that version, but for the most part, unless you have a specific reason, chances are you should be using now 6.3 LTS. This is actually great news for me because I'm in the process of doing something that I've wanted to do for a long time, I'm basically upgrading all of my project files that I've built over the many years that I've been making videos. I'm upgrading all of those to Unity 6, and previously I was going to basically update them to Unity 6.0, but now I'll be updating them to 6.3. So you have this is a pretty important version, so let's see what exactly is new in this version. And honestly, the answer is not so much. This version doesn't really have too many flashy new features, instead the goal is really very much performance and stability. Which honestly, that's a very good thing, that is something that a lot of people have wanted for a very long time, for Unity to focus on the core of the engine, make it performant, make it stable, and then worry about adding more features. In the recent Unite, they talked about their production verification process. Basically, this is how they work with all kinds of studios using actual real-world projects, just like V-Rising, like their own Survival Kids game, like Den of Wolves. They basically have access to these projects to make sure the new versions are as stable as possible. Save so over here, they're going for performance accessibility, is very much based on that. So hopefully, this new version, this one, should be basically the most stable version you've ever tried. But it does have a bunch of new features. The one that is probably the most important is the Platform Toolkit. This is basically a single API that can basically abstract away all of the implementations for all the various systems. For example, Xbox, Steam, PlayStation Switch, all of those have different APIs. Usually, if you want to port your game to all those consoles, you need to implement all of those completely different APIs. But this one over here, this one basically has an abstract layer where you just implement just this one layer and it will automatically make it work for Xbox, for Steam, PlayStation, and so on. Now for me, I've never actually published any of my games onto console, so I've never quite gone through this process, but I have heard that it is quite a bit of a nightmare, so this one seems to be an insanely useful package. You can basically implement just once, and you can easily compile your game to run on all of these platforms. So this seems something super useful, I definitely do want to try this out to see if it is literally just how good they say it is. If so, then this seems pretty impressive. This should make porting games onto consoles much, much easier. Another sort of new, subtle, but also very important thing is the render graph. And the reason why it's so important is because what it says here is how this implementation for the render graph, this part of their long-term unification across pipelines. So their goal of merging both pipelines to end up with just one. That work is still ongoing, it is not fully complete right now in 6.3, but it is basically starting. Right now in 6.3, both URP and AGRP, they're both using the common render graph. So they're very much working towards a future where you have just one render pipeline. One new feature that this does have is rendered 3D as 2D. Now what this means is you can have a 3D mesh, kind of like this little character here, and that 3D mesh can actually exist inside a 2D scene, and importantly, by existing inside that 2D scene, it is actually affected by things like 2D lights. So this is a relatively simple thing, but it should make making 2D games much, much easier. Normally, the 3D workflow that is much more well-established, it is much easier to make 3D characters as opposed to 2D, and if you want to use 3D characters in a 2D game, you can do that, but previously you would need to basically pre-process that character, whereas now you can literally just dump that 3D mesh straight onto your 2D game, and everything will work, it won't be affected by 2D lights, everything 2D specific. So if you tend to use this workflow, then this just became much, much easier. Then on this version, they're also talking about multiplayer templates and Unity building blocks. When it comes to building blocks, I already covered them in detail in a previous video. They're basically a quick and easy way to get started using the various Unity gaming services. Literally just drag and drop and you can implement authentication, you can implement achievements, multiplayer and so on. And for the multiplayer templates, these are actually not yet available. They are coming soon, sometime in the future. They showcase those two templates in the roadmap at Unite. Basically, there's a third-person gameplay sample, and there's a first-person shooter, both of them in multiplayer. These samples should be interesting, especially the first-person shooter one, just because that one is meant to be using netcode that is pre-advanced. It is meant to be netcode that combines both netcode for game objects and netcode for entities. So I'm definitely very curious to download this template to see how exactly does it work. Then this version also has some improvements on 2D animation. So if you use 2D skeletal animation, hopefully it should be a little bit more performant. Unity has now also added support for HTTP2. So if you're doing simple web requests, or if you're making multiplayer games, if so, hopefully they should be a little bit faster by default. This obviously depends on the server itself supporting HTTP2. But if so, you can see it should be a little bit more performant. Another interesting addition is the low-level 2D physics APIs. So this basically implements Box2D version 3. 
And apparently this includes multi-thread performance improvements, enhanced determinism, visual debugging, and support for both editor and runtime improved gizmos and more. I'm not exactly sure what exactly this means, but thankfully there are some example projects over here. There's a WebGL demo showing a bunch of complex stuff happening in action. So again, you can inspect this if you want to see what exactly they changed. One interesting small thing is how you can now customize the toolbar. You can change the appearance and location of controls in the main toolbar. So that's this toolbar over here. Apparently you can now modify all of these things. That's a tiny thing that some people might absolutely love. There's also a new hierarchy window. This one should be quite a bit more performant, quite a bit more capable. They've mentioned on the roadmap how it finally has horizontal scrolling. This should be a nice improvement, especially if you have projects with a lot of objects. You can try this one right now in Unity 6.3 by going into this. However, like it says here, this one is currently in preview and might change in the future. In terms of physics, they had an interesting thing. So you can now disable and remove the physics backend. So basically, if you don't need physics in your project at all, if so, you can just remove it and make the final build size a little bit smaller. Now, when it comes to the kinds of games that I cover on this channel, indie, Steam, PC games, pretty much all of those are going to be using physics of some sort. So for those kinds of games, this doesn't seem very useful. But if you're making, let's say, some WebGL stuff that does not use physics at all, just some kind of WebGL app, then this could be quite nice. I have no idea how big physics is, but if you can optimize it a little bit, then that sounds great. On UI, UI Toolkit is continuing to get a bunch of improvements, for example, adding vector graphics support, and something that this is the first time that I'm hearing about, the UI test framework. Apparently, this is a package for automated testing of the UI Toolkit. This sounds quite interesting. This could be great for testing games, like literally automating the playtesting by making it automatically click on various places. This is a package that you can install and set up, and just at a glance, it seems relatively simple to use. But thankfully, like they said recently at Unite, Unity UI, that one is not going anywhere. That one still remains a priority for Unity 6. They won't continue to update and improve it. So if you're like me and if you prefer using Unity UI for runtime stuff as opposed to UI Toolkit, you can still continue using it. That one is still continuing to get supported and updated. So yep, those are my highlights, but you can see everything on this page. So you can see how they actually added quite a lot of things. But like I said, not a lot of them are necessarily those kinds of flashy features. There's no big update, really just small, tiny, incremental quality of life improvements, which honestly, I think that's a very good thing. I think the engine's already great, so focusing on stability and in tiny improvements, I think that is very much the right way to do it before finally adding all kinds of things in the future. For example, you might be wondering, what about Core CLR? That's the big, massive improvement that is coming, and yep, it is coming in the future. They recently talked about it at Unite. This is a process for getting it done, and hopefully it should be done by the next LTS 6.7 by the end of next year. So yep, that's Unity 6.3. Like I said, this is the latest LTS version. So from now into the future, this is probably the version you should be using for your projects. You can already go into your Unity Hub, download it, and install it. Did you hear the story on how the game about digging a hole actually made millions of dollars? Or do you know how much is a Steam Daily deal worth and how you might get one? Did you hear about the problem of making more money with assets and games? Or have you done this extremely important exercise? Those are all things that I covered in my Game Dev Report newsletter. It's what I write every single Sunday with any weekly game dev news and some interesting articles that I come across every week. Sign up for free with the link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.